What's up all Power Rats crew? Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to remove your PCM and reinstall it. Super simple, not complicated. But before we get this video started, I wanna give a shout out to Michiana Jeep Club. They sent me out this t-shirt. Hey George, really like it buddy. Really nice shirt. Got the artwork going on on the back. I wear it often, I wear it with pride. Ah, speaking with pride, baby, it's right here. Got that USA going on. That's what pride's all about right there. So everyone, I'll show you guys how to get the PCM going. One quick note about the video. Those of you who follow my channel quite often, you may recognize some footage from way back whenever I was taking the fenders off a rust bucket here and doing my fender delete setup. Well, I'm using part of that footage to show you guys how to remove the PCM because I was kind of shooting two videos at once and you know, get to a certain spot that I would remove the water, water bottle for the uh, uh, windshield washer squirters and stuff. Then that shows how to get access to the uh, to the PCM because you got to move it out of the way before you can get to the computer. So that's where I'm gonna pick this video up. So let's get this a rolling. Go. Now let's take out the engine coolant tank overflow. Seven sixteenths here. Seven sixteenths there. Get them bolts out. Now that I have the bolts out, this is ready to slide out. Which one do next? Take your hose. Oh. If you got a clamp on there, squeeze, remove the clamp, but my clamp kind of broke, so yeah. Anyway, pull it through all the engine junk and then grab it and bring it up like that. Ta da! Once your radiator overflow is out of the way, let's get to our washer tank. You've got a Phillips head screwdriver right back here. A Phillips head screw, yeah, but you need to use a screwdriver. Yeah, I'll get it right in a minute. Anyway, you know what I'm at. And once you get that four-way Phillips head screw out right there, what should happen is now your uh, washer fluid tank should pick straight up. Because if you look real close right there, it's kind of like a tongue and groove type situation. It reminds me of a pain in the butt, and I can't do it on camera because I need both hands. But oftentimes, take your hand from down at the bottom here, push up, and wiggle the tank. With, like left hand is down here on the bottom of the tank, push it upward on it. Right hand is up here, wiggle the tank back and forth. And it'll work it up out of the groove like that. All right, I got that rascal up out of there. I've got my little pump hose right there. Then you disconnect, but I've got a little bit of fluid in. As you see, uh, your wiring harness, you simply just take that here, pull a little tab back, wiggle the plug, boop, it pops right off. Uh, I noticed as I got it out, I got a little crack in it right here. So I don't know that I'm gonna reuse this thing or not. So anyway, Next thing is unhook your hose, get that whole bottle out of the way. You take your harness and tuck it back over here somewhere and get it out of the way, which gives you access and room to everything inside here. Now you've got an option, you can go ahead and take this out with a fender if you want to, that way you can get to it a bit easier. You know, once you get the fender completely out, but also you've got a bunch of junk down there you got to get to as well, so maybe, you know, one more or less thing you scratch your arm on getting that out. And also, to be 100% honest with you guys, I'm shooting two videos at once. So if you're removing the video, if you're removing the fender, you can leave us in there for right now, if you want, totally up to you. But I'm also shooting at the same time the video on how to remove your PCM if you need to replace it. So, for the sake of getting in here a little bit easier with the sockets, I am going to go ahead and take this out. 3 8 socket here, here, and then we already got that one out. 3 8 get them out. Now notice here on your bracket, you've got the bottom bolt here, and this is that upper right-hand bolt, or upper uh, driver's side bolt, whichever way you look at it. If you loosen this one up and loosen that one up, you can rotate your bracket that way and rotate it right out. So therefore, whenever you go to put it back in, put your bottom one in, and your other one's way up here. You can just slide your bottom one in, then you know move the bracket in place, then put this one in, or however you want to do it. But as you see, it'll pivot on this bolt here and rotate out of that, but you got to take this one completely out. Now here's where your engine harness plugs into the uh, PCM 5 16 nut driver. Take that out. Now when you get that screw backed out, that harness doesn't always want to just grab it by your hand and pull it out easy, you know? It doesn't always want to cooperate that much. So what you want to do is hit the camera with a screwdriver. Get in behind it from down top like this. Look at the positioning of the blade of the screwdriver. It's flat against the fender like that. Keep it in position, get it behind the plug. And if you pry it outward like this, it pushes the plug out of the PCM. 
and just keep working around it like that until you get it completely out. And then voila, it's out. Yay! Look at all those pins. Hooey! Anyway, then we can take this right here. We're just going to set it back out of the way here. And then we're, now we're going to take out the PCM. Now to make life a little bit easier on you, whenever you pull your screws out for your PCM, you got the bottom one out first, pull this one out next, leave this one loose but hanging in place. Why? Because then you take your left hand, take the rest of it out and hold on to the PCM with your right hand. You don't drop it down inside the abyss right there and risk damaging anything. See, now you grab hold of it like this, hold on to it, bring the screw out, set your driver down, turn it, rotate it like this, and bring it straight out. And you can see right here the little plastic inserts. That's where they're screwing into. And you see the little plastic insert there. They just kind of snap in. So to put it back in, move it out of the way. We're going to do it like this. Basically what it's going to boil down to is putting it back in reverse order of the way it was, of the way you took it apart. Zoom back a little bit so you guys can watch. We're going to take and drop it in this way. Rotate it around, and just so it hangs on its own, go ahead and run that one through, and you get it lined up here. Run it in for a couple threads, but don't tighten it. Now you want to worry about your bottom one next, and what you're just going to simply do is put it in the bottom hole. I mean, I don't even know how I can even begin to show you guys what I'm doing, but basically what it boils down to, you put it in, you run it into the bottom of the ECM, and then you just want to rock your ECM back and forth till you feel it hit that plastic insert, and then in the middle of that insert, then you'll start screwing this in a couple threads, and you're good to go for this one over here to line up. So, I'm going to put it in that bottom of the PCM hole, I feel for the plastic insert and move it, rock it back and forth because it's going to pivot on this. And now I've got the screw started. It's got like one thread bite right now. And then I'll take my nut driver, turn it a couple turns, just make sure it's got a good, good solid bite. And then start the third one because once you line, this one right here's going to pivot. Once you line up the bottom one, it's going to automatically line this one up. And if you feel froggy, go ahead and tighten them up from this point forward. Yeah, I know some of you guys, well, you're putting the same one back in. Well, I'm just showing you guys how to take it out and put it back in because I'm going to end up taking it right back out again anyway because I'm actually pulling this whole fender off from a different video. Uh, so now what you want to do is your this right here. Let me get you a different camera angle so you can see what's up. Okay, as you see, the screw right here sticks all the way through the uh, engine wiring harness. It does not push in, okay? So basically what you're going to do is plug it in somewhat and kind of let it ride there and get your nut driver on the bolt that puts the harness in and take your time. Because you want the threads to engage properly. Now the threads are engaged properly and not cross-threaded. Take it, just tighten the bolt up. And what it'll do, it'll get to a certain point, and now it's starting to get snug. Check your engine harness. You know, kind of do a little push and wiggle on it to make sure it's engaging correctly. But you really can't disengage wrong because it's got the groove and all this here and there. But what you don't want to do is get all froggy going too quickly and bend the pins on the PCM. So to see I pushed it in a little bit. Now that screw's loose. Now the screw's tight. Push it in a little bit more. Kind of flex it around a little bit. And see the screw's loose again. Now at this point you should be pretty well good to go to go ahead and turn it all the way in now when you get to the bottom you fit when you ever get to the bottom of the threads or whenever the plug is fully engaged you're gonna feel it get tight don't crank it once you feel that snugness hit you're done okay 
So don't get all froggy on it. Run it in until you feel it stop and just give it a little little kiss and a bump and you're done. Don't have to crank it, okay? Then make sure your screws are tight here and put all this other junk back together. Ain't don't need me showing you how to put all this back together simply because it's just reversal assembly is just reversal of disassembly. Cool. All right. Did you enjoy that video? Did you learn something from that video? If you did, hit that thumbs up down below. Subscribe if you have it. Because when you subscribe, you will be notified. Also, hit that little bell notification. That way you'll be notified when I release these cool videos. Also, down in the comments, leave me a cool comment. And say, hey, dude, great video. I learned a lot from it. Or, just, or if you just want to say hi, that's cool, too. Also, don't forget to share these videos out. Share them out to your Facebook, your Twitter, Reddit, whatever type of social media you use. Share these videos out. Why? Because I take the time to do these videos. You guys can share them out, which spreads the knowledge and helps more people. I'll make them. You share them. We, we work together as one community to help each other, okay? Share these videos. Really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all. Knuckle bump. Peace, my jeepin' brothers. Just want to give one more shout-out to George. Appreciate it, brother. Michiana Jeep Club. You guys rock. Yeah, right there, baby. Peace.